heady technical stuff we've been going through the morning and what's going to come. Uh, I'm I'm not a programmer by training. I'm a, I wrote my first program about five years back. So and you know back when I studied, uh, there were no programming courses for mechanical engineers. So then about five years back, uh, first first program that I wrote was in MATLAB. My wife taught me how to write a function in MATLAB. That's how I started out, and uh, I got into this area of machine learning. I work for a company which uh, we have a division which makes uh, products for the investment trading domain. So we make the products using machine learning. So I got into this area, and and, and for a year I used MATLAB, and I found that uh, you know. As a new, as a new into programming, I found it MATLAB extremely easy to learn, extremely easy to work on. So uh, it's after a year that my colleague introduced me to Julia. And then I started working on Julia. I switched over to Julia from MATLAB. That's that's like about three years, more than three years back. Yeah, and uh, I have not used anything else after that. So I've been working on Julia for, for the last three years, and that is really the first programming language that I worked on. Uh, so probably that's what we all wanted to highlight. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so uh, just to start with in MATLAB, one. Uh, so when I switched over from MATLAB to Julia, uh, one issue which I faced at that point was that there was not enough information on the web on Julia as there was in MATLAB. For someone who is starting out, obviously that's the only way to learn. Now, I, I mean, over the period of time I've seen that the information on the web has dramatically increased and now I don't see an issue of not getting, not finding or you know, having to ask someone for you know, how to, how to uh, write a function or how to, what function will work where. The other hand, uh, what I found really good was that in MATLAB, uh, when I used to write functions, it was kind of slowing down and scripting was faster. I do not know whether I was doing something wrong, I don't know whether it's the same right now, but at that time, scripting was faster than when I have a lot, lot of functions, which is not what, you know, which is, we didn't uh, really fascinate. I wanted to write functions. Right? So uh, that, that was one thing, and when I switched over to Julia, I realized that, you know, here it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Functions are better. You write in functions, and that's better. So that that was so that was the advantage and disadvantage that I saw when I switched over three years, three and a half years back. And uh, so I've worked uh, exclusively in Julia, as I mentioned, and I've used a uh, couple of machine learning packages. Uh, there are quite a few packages in Julia uh, for machine learning, and I really can't evaluate the pros and cons of these, this package versus that of others. What I have seen, what I want to uh, point out is that the packages in Julia, you have code that is transparent, which was not the case with some of the languages that I saw. I mean, MATLAB is a case in point. Uh, you know, MATLAB has uh, a lot of packages and you know, obviously more than that what Julia has right now. But some of the packages, when I want to uh, see the code behind, I wasn't able to. And that kind of impeded uh, progress. So in machine learning, what I've seen is that uh, you know, machine learning is a set of tools, like many of you might know. And these tools can be used by people who you know who want to learn machine learning and who know some maths, and you know, you can learn it. But the key thing. I believe is to apply the tools innovatively in a certain way where it will fit into your domain, whatever application you want to apply it into. And for that, you necessarily have to make changes in the, in the code, as in, in the package code. When you use package, when you use a package, uh, you have to make changes and you have to, uh, there will be a number of times when you, when you want to make changes to the package code. I want to quickly uh, mention a couple of examples of uh, my experience of doing this. Uh, these, are, these are two packages which I have used and 
Uh, it's a, it's a, if you look at the code for these packages, they are crisp, they are short, they are not elaborate, they have enough functionality. I mean, they're still, uh, still being built and there are uh, times when these change, uh, people contributing. So, uh, for, for example, decision tree, I mean, uh, I, I, I hope uh, people, the people are familiar with uh, you know, basic machine learning. So, when you use a random forest within decision tree, you have a package in Julia which, which allows you to do a random forest. Most of the time, the trees are trained, you train the trees, right? and you, the trees are generally trained based on a certain objective function. Now, you need flexibility for this objective function. You don't want to have a single objective function, and usually, any standard package, any standard training mechanism will train it based on accuracy. How many instances are classified correctly? That's that's the usual objective function used for training uh, a forest uh, or, a, or a tree. But you might want to do something else because when you use it in machine learning, when you use uh, maybe I should I should give an example. Let's say you want to you want to uh, you're facing a problem of predicting uh, how probable a person is person is to have a heart problem. So you have a lot of features. And you want to build a decision tree, a decision tree, which kind of helps you to uh, see whether he's a, he's at a high risk or a low risk. A typical machine learning problem where if you have a lot of features, and features would be like the cholesterol level or the fitness regimen, you know, it could be anything, it could be a lot of, a lot of such features. And when you try it, you might not really want to stick to the accuracy objective function alone. You might want to bring something else, some other objective function. And there you need to do a lot of changes. And these lot of changes become very few changes when you go to these packages. And that's the biggest advantage I've seen. You just have to write a couple of lines, you can get to the package, write those couple of lines, get, get, get it onto your local uh, package, and then write a few lines to change the objective function. And there's validation. Validation is like when you train, you want to see how well it is performing. Now again, there's a standard, the standard methods of validation and fold cross validation. <coughs> you want to change it. You might want to change. It. You might want to wait. You don't want to wait everything, all the instances in a similar way. You might want to wait certain instances in a uh, with, with a different, with a certain measure. Like for instance, in finance, that I work in finance, uh, you don't want the accuracy, as in the number of instances that are classified correctly. You might want to base a model on returns. So that you have a global model, you don't have a local model. So, if, so if you want to base it on returns, you'll have to change the objective function. So that's that's the biggest value that I have seen uh, in my experience of using uh, Julia, where you can just change code in packages easily, which is helpful. And, uh, and that's probably what machine learning. I don't want to get into it further. That is the other. Uh, package which is used with text analysis, which is basically uh, sentiment analysis using textual features. You look at documents, look at all the words, and try to extract information so it can help you in decision making. That's text analysis. So that's another package and we use it extensively. The same thing goes for that package also. Uh, if you put, if, if anyone is interested, you could look at these packages and see how, how crisp the code in there, code is in there. The uh, second part of it, which I want to talk about, is about data manipulation. So, uh, as when you work in the finance domain, more time goes in data manipulation than actual modeling. That's what usually happens because you deal with large arrays of data. And uh, I have worked worked on a number of uh, languages, but what I've noticed, what I've heard from my colleagues who Sarah and Julia is that it's much easier to manipulate arrays and manipulate data to make it in the way you want. So that's the other advantage. I could, I could just quickly uh, show you something. Uh, this is uh, a very simple thing, but I just want to 
uh, show it uh, just for you to understand uh, how to deal with large arrays in GDN. Uh, what is uh, what is important here is you have to do a lot of input output, as in reading from the from a file on your hard disk and writing into the file. So that is very easy in here. I mean, you can do it from any programming language, but it's the syntax is fairly simple in here. So I, I have uh, so I have a file saved here, demo to jail. I'm just picking up a path, that particular path. Now I want to read that file. So since I have, uh, I'm using dollar path because path is already defined as a user. So you have uh, uh, 24,000, 25,000 rows and four columns in the array. Now let's say I want to, uh, you know, get out, get it off the labels with the column labels. So let's say do uh, So this is uh, assigned to a variable data. Control shift plus the computer. Control shift plus the computer. Yeah, it's working. You see it now? See it now? Okay, so I'm just getting rid of the first one. First. So now I have uh, without the hint so that I can kind of manipulate it. Now let's say I want to, let's say the fourth column, uh, fourth column has probabilities and I want to pick out all the rows which have a probability of greater than 0 0.7 let's say. So let me do that. Yeah. Do that. So I get uh, so I get all the rows which have uh, probabilities more than 0.7, so which is around 9,000 rows. Let's say I want to make the first column integers. So I have data. So now I have these as integers. Let's say I want to. Uh, convert these dates, I mean this is a very important thing because in, in finance we deal with lots of dates, all time series. So date conversion becomes a major work sometimes because you get dates in various formats. So here uh, I'll just use the package, so you get a package. Right. Three. Eight. So I just have to put the uh, the format, the date format here, which is like this: Y M D for this. <coughs> So that's done. So now I have dates in the date format instead of the string that we had earlier. Now I can kind of use it. Like uh, I can I can use it to you know find the find the number of days between two rows. Let's say for instance uh, data. Let's say ten comma three, which is the tenth row, uh, the date column minus data. 
Let's, let's go. So I get 28 days. So I, I can basically now do anything with this dates. And, um, so now, you know, if I want to do something like, if I want to concatenate to, it's, it's, it's very simple. If I want to write it out to a file, it's just write CSV data dot CSV. That's done. And uh, so the reading and writing, which yeah, so reading and writing is is very simple, and which is. Which is, I think, the best part for, for people like us who work on a lot of data. Yeah, and that's probably what I want to say. Even if you want to see something else being done here, I can try. Any other questions on using Julia? So, I have a question. I probably don't need a mic. So, I just started with uh, machine learning and so far I've just built uh, uh, static models where there is a uh, data set and I train it and I get it. How do I make something dynamic then? Is Julia have some packages that make it dynamic as in new data comes in and it trains and whatever. It, it sort of was just a model every day. You want to automate that? Not automate, it's more like they are dynamic. Automate, I can write a batch file or something. But is there something like that in Julia? Already I will be. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, I mean, so I mean, what, what we do is so once you have the model ready, once you have the code the model ready, yeah, we put the new data in. That's what we do. Okay. Uh, what you're saying is uh, to make it dynamic. Anyways, you've got to give new data. So the problem is this: see, yeah. if my data is 100 GB and yeah. every day I get 1 GB, so if I'm running the whole thing, then I'm running basically appending this data and then running the whole script again and again. And again. Right? Why can't I just run it on like the new data is appended and there's some sort of correction only on that. So transferring learning is what is asking. Yeah. Name parameters. You are going to implement it, but that's a machine learning problem. It's not a UDI. No. Is there something like this? I'm I'm starting very very. Oh, okay. So you know you could explain in any way. And and uh, so first of all, if you train the model yeah. with with hundred instances and you have a new instance. Hmm. And if you're going to drop off the first one, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. You know? yeah. I mean, usually, unless it's way up. Even if it's way up, if it's an outlier, you don't want it to make a big difference or not. Yeah. Because you want the model not to fit to that data, right? The idea is not to overfit. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> so, usually, when you add one single data point, it's not going to. I mean, we generally don't do that. They generally kind of, let's say, change the data. If let's say out of 100, 20, 20 percent has come, hmm, we add that in training. Okay. So, and how does your model work in your finance? Can we take well? the software? So, the thing is, this process is called online learning, and there's a separate package for that you can check on. Uh -huh. Move on to other questions. That's not a Julia question. I have a Julia question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can Julia work with data streams? Stream. Stream of data. Data streams? Yes. yes. The, the, the data that is coming in? Yeah, stream data. data like Spark, Machina. Like yeah, you, you can. You can. You can. There is, uh, I mean, you'll have a database yeah. where it's... Uh, no. no. It will be, so be online streaming. Yeah. Oh, I, haven't, like, I, I, I haven't done that. We haven't done that. I, I, we don't... No, I'm, I'm yeah. So I'm yeah. not, I think in general, like, with other support for data for stream processing in yeah. uh, India. Do you know that? Sorry, yeah. I was just... Sorry, Did, data Julia does Spark streaming. Yeah. Does Julia yeah. has support for streams? I mean, like Spark streaming or something similar to that. There, there are various uh, streaming packages actually that people have written in Julia, and actually you can just in pretty much basic Julia code you can just stream things through okay. without sort of making too much of a fuss about it. Okay. Because the performance is good, so you don't need an elaborate system. Okay. Um, but there are uh, there are online statistics uh, streaming statistics packages that people have written, okay. which make it a little more convenient to work. Okay. One last question. Please. 
I think there's one there. Yeah, so I wanted to ask this do, do their packages like which have been released as of now include like uh, like you told normal machine learning algorithms. Now, now do they have neural networks, deep neural networks, CNN, RNN uh, packages? Those are uh, neural nets are probably the first machine learning algorithm that you think of. Instead, yeah, instead. No, so the, the, the first one that I think of is Stochastic 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 you have the package called yeah. Mocha.jl, which yeah. is exactly The multiple package. It supports deep learning, uh, but not on GPU as you are currently. Yeah, it, it does actually, but let's take this. Why don't you talk to me or someone in the tea break? Mm -hmm. we'll, 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 I think we are short of time, so we'll mm -hmm. move on. Yeah. Uh, but Dinka is around for the rest of the day, right? Yeah. Uh, so, let's continue. Thank you.